Welcome everyone in the session number five of the subject uh, intelligent transportation system or the traffic management. Uh, today our session is about navigation system or uh, tracking system. So the navigation or tracking uh, usually use uh, through the satellite system connected with the uh, Google Maps, which actually support the global coverage. In a very simple word, so how the global positioning system or the global navigation satellite system actually connect together to give us the the uh, the uh, the latitude and longitude from the from that specific satellite here, uh, which is connected here in terms of a tower, which actually receive its signal and from the moving object. So when we would like to identify its exact location in the real time, that is basically navigation. OK, so today we will try to understand the navigation system connecting of global uh, global positioning system along with the role of geographic information system as well. Actually, you, you need to understand what is navigation. So the word navigation is actually driven from the from the Latino or Latin words navis, uh, which means ship. And uh, ship in a Greek, which means to move. OK. So it is used for the purpose to guide the any individual entity that could be vehicle or that could be pedestrian to reach from its origin to the destination. OK, so its purpose is to guide that specific. Uh, if it's a moving object or if it's a human pedestrian, etc. So how it can guide it from its origin to the destination to its endpoint that are like to direct him towards its ultimate destination. That is actually the purpose of navigation. OK, so first one is to ship and then to guide. OK, so those are the are the two broader uh, uh, the uh, definition of the navigation. Uh, before to go in a detail, I would like to give you just idea that what is GPS system or global positioning system? Or what is satellite? So the global positioning system is the is the network of different satellite. OK, so you need to understand that specific figure in the in the uh, three different uh, concept. One is the control segment. Second is the user segment and the top one in the first one is the space segment. That space segment consists of multiple satellites. Here you can see. So OK, so GPS is a network of satellite which continuously transmit different codes to the control segment and to the user segment. So you can see here, first of all, we have space segment which consists of satellite and then control which is uh, usually on the ground and then user segment which actually work through either mobile navigation system or GPS or maybe any tracking device. OK. So that space segment, it consists of at least here. We have almost. 24 satellites. Almost where 21 of them are active and three of them are uh, still operating in this pair. They are for about uh, 12,000 12, miles. Uh, from the Earth surface. OK, and that control segment work the GPS satellite by tricking them and provide them the the correct or better and clock time. So it's have two function to give the information of the orbit plus. Uh, time clock time. OK, and then last one we have the user segment. The function of that user is it, it consists of global positioning system, which we call GPS. OK, 
and uh, we need to understand what is GPS because that's very much important that we understand. <coughs> Excuse me. So that we can understand the GPS, its design and its application. So GPS is actually the the uh, the system which build through the number first transmission in form of the coded and then second precise identification of any object through different distance. OK, like here. That is satellite. And then it gave us exactly precise identification to identify it in form of a size shape and other characteristic and then through the large distance that from that month to that much so like usually it's 12000 miles currently <clears throat> we have uh, the four navigation system which is called uh, us navester russian glonosis and uh, European Union Galileo. OK, so that specific one I will try to elaborate a bit about the uh, United States one, so which work on the three basic principle. The first one is to provide the protected P code means protected or precise or precision, which usually used for the military purpose. So those are actually domain within GPS. And then second one, we have the the C code or CA. So it means the course acquisition or the standard positioning system, that one. And then third one, we have the uh, almanac and uh, emphatic code. So like it's the, the kind of a binary language uh, through which satellite actually send information to the ground, OK? And now the last question is that where we can use application of the GPS. We can use that GPS in air, uh, in sea, in land, uh, even in the emergency management, uh, even to do the survey and also to do the mapping as well. It's like aerial type mapping, okay? It's like which we call aerial survey or aerial planning. So it have a, a very huge uh, application in the almost universe. But before to go in a detail, so we need to understand that how much accurate we do have, OK? So the global positioning system accuracy is placing on the transmission of the signal from that top to, to identify any object, OK? Uh, because the GPS receiver at an interface station knows the exact location. It can tell how much atmospheric conditions such as wind, air, rain, snow can affect that specific signal condition, fog, smoke, OK, so those information is used to correct the potential information which received from the from the GPS. So first of all, GPS uh, send its signal to the to the uh, to the uh, to like measure that specific object to the base station. So when it's identify its true position here, but it gave error something like that here. Okay. So when that specific GPS send another signal, for example, that moving subject reaches to here, okay? So it again sends its uh, uh, it, it, uh, signal and it receive it again. So then it can correct information that that specific range was not here. That was actually in that specific coordinate, okay? So that's how GPS can actually measure the exact position. Uh, it have a bit uh, limitation when we have the high rise building. We will try to understand that 
concept as well in the next slide. Uh, before to go in a detail, we have the three type of a navigation system. The first one is called uh, traditional. Maybe you remember the movie called Jack Sparrow, where he was using a kind of a specific compass. OK, and then we have the GNSS system and then we have the cell phone technologies. So the traditional navigation system uh, are which you call it most traditional navigation plan their route while using different techniques when we don't uh, when they don't have that satellite system. It's also called the downward selling as well here. Yeah. Downward selling. So uh, the concept of downward is that they sit uh, the the kind of a course to specific point, for example, from here to the uh, east southeast here. From that specific part. So when you reach to the to the exact latitude. You turn. And let the vent carry you to your exact destination. So it actually work on the basis of a latitude. So. Its exact position can be so like as I already mentioned the movie name as well Jack Sparrow. So they use actually that type of a typical compass, which uh, so in that movie, so it's a kind of a more sky fi movie. So they uh, they build that concept more on a on a kind of a fate where your fate wants to be or where you want to be. So like, but actually it work on the on the concept of a latitude. So when you reach to the exact or correct destination and then you can turn it on. And the second concept is. <clears throat> the correct position is calculating using the uh, so like it's it's working on the uh, piloting and uh, jet rigging are used where we are trying to calculate the horizontal angle. Between object. And the destination point. And uh, did means that the actual computation computation which is the the uh, process from where we would like to start and then to calculate that moment to reach to that specific destination okay so global positioning system requires minimum of three satellite to transmit any type of a data is that uh, uh, that uh, uh, figure we already explained which was working on the uh, three basic concept space segment control and then user so the gn uh, nss or which we call global navigation system uh, it require at least three satellite and it's working on the and the time T stand for time. And. Uh, v is basically speed. And that specific L is the is the kind of a uh, the total distance. OK, we might have issues in the high rise area. OK, so there might be the signal drop or such type of area could be happened. So for example, if you need the any type of data from that indoor system and it did not reach it because of the another high rise building, so we might have loss of data or we might receive the, the not exact or correct information. <clears throat> now we are trying to connect GPS with GNSS and with GIS. So the successful application of GPS for positioning and monitoring of any moment of any vehicle or any moving part body such as pedestrian, that could be mostly improved or enhanced through 
Geographic Information System. What is exactly the difference or its uh, advantage to amalgamate both of those technologies while to work as a one unit? For example, if we take example of GPS system, so it actually only send its data in the, uh, and here is we already mentioned, in the uh, Almanac and uh, Emphares status, which is again uh, completely based on the, on the kind of a uh, coordinates or the exact location, but it is very hard to identify. So with GIS, so we can track any object in the form of the exact object, such as like to represent those information on the geographical map. For example, if I just give you coordinates here, so it's quite hard to like reach here. But if I told you some like reference point around that part, might be mall or hospital, or like kind of a residential area. So you can get here very much easily. So this is the, the kind of a magic of when the GPS meet with GIS. So we can receive the same coordinate on the geographical map. Okay. And both of those uh, global positioning system and uh, geographic information system work on the uh, on the OD matrix part, which we call the from the origin to the destination. Okay, and uh, again, the GIS through GIS we can generate different type of a shortest route where we have less traffic, and we can uh, we can also identify the safe way, increase the comfort as well, and also the preference to select by different users. The next part is about the cell phone technology, which is the or third part. Okay? So cell phone technologies are the are the kind of a unique technology for the positioning or tracking of any cell phone of a moving vehicle or pedestrian while using radio network and additional feature of that specific cell phone. So the operator knows the exact position from that base station. Okay. Like the data received from the from the satellite. It's received here and we can identify uh, the any one exact data. And whenever the, the cell phone is on, so it's send the identification code by the every single user and it's also gave us the exact uh, size of a call for example maybe you uh, saw the uh, different spy movies so where to identify the exact location at least we need the the 30 second required to reach to the color exact location and identification so that positioning technology can also work both in the indoor and outdoor technology so how different cell phone technologies actually work while in order to design a single uh, either or collect data from different transmitter from the different from a single cell phones or how a single cell phone can receive the data from different tower. So mobile location estimate are determined the geographical estimation of any location. Okay, so for example, if we measure the distance from here, it will be different. But if we measure it from that tower, it will be different. And if we measure that distance from here, it will be different. So that means that while finding the coordination between those three different towers, C1, C2, and C3, or like B1, B2, so there is a feasible mobile location solution uh, through which we can sort that uh, after not only by another network, but the service provider in the mobile device. Okay, uh, another example I would like to give you. 
exactly on the on the border of Pakistan and Iran. So here, almost in that part, we almost lost all the signals. Okay, because that those towers actually cover that much area. And uh, I heard from one of my friend that near to the Afghanistan border. So he told me that sometime we received the signal even from the Pakistan tower as well. OK, so they can call to their relatives in a very economical and a very uh, kind of a uh, like through cheap calling rates because they are actually sharing the same network. So the purpose of this specific figure that this cell phone or that specific car or maybe you can call that object or like pedestrian. It have different uh, kind of a network protocol from those three different towers. OK, and those through that specific uh, cell phone, we can also define or also design the signal system exactly uh, at the same location as well. Okay? which is the basic purpose of intelligent transportation system. So how the indoor system work? So that is actually uh, related with the with the uh, additional hardware, which we call internal GPS, uh, ultrasound sensor through which we have the infrared transmitter and receiver as well. OK. The first one. Indoor positioning system. So, facility satellite is installed on the ground and sent synchronized or, or you can call the coded message as well as satellite from space. So, based on that exact position, so it is also possible that with the standard GPS receiver, we can also determine the precise position of pedestrian, car, vehicle or any object. But that specific technology is is very much expensive. So the indoor positioning system consists of of the three technologies, uh, infrared technology, ultra sensor and radio frequency. So indoor positioning system are the IPS system is the network of device which used to locate people or object where GPS and other technology have the lake to provide the precise data. Or maybe fail entirely such as such as if, if for example, if we have multi story building high rise building. OK, or maybe parking garage, which is, for example, uh, 10 story underground or maybe any like kind of a underground locations or tunnel. OK. <clears throat> so now we are trying to understand the infrared technology for the internal navigation system within any type of a. The first thing you need to understand that it transmit its data in in the form of a cone. OK, you can see here. So that specific signal transmit from that user, that is user, and that is specific object. <clears throat> so it's transmitted signal directly from here. So in that case, that is receiver and that one is sender. And vibrating or sound signal actually given in the infrared technology. And speaker is also activated to direct any user towards its destination. OK. And uh, uh, that specific message appear in the form of a voice message. Maybe you use the same technology as well. And then next one, we have the ultrasonic sensor. So ultrasonic sensor are often used for the uh, autonomous indoor navigation system, and its purpose is to avoid Collision, <laughs> collision, wide collision with movable or immovable object. So 
when it's transmit the signal uh, which encounter within any obstacle so it reflected back to the sonar and uh, which converted into the human ear detection form like in the decibels and it's also call, uh, create a kind of a mental map of the any building ahead before you enter through that ultrasonic sensor so through that way we can detect an obstacle on the road and the distance from your for example if you are here so we can determine the that for example here we have a jam so we can understand situation and also we can find the that specific distance as well so ultrasonic sensor actually increase uh, like for example it give you the information before any accident or incident happens so you already know the situation before you get into so it will also increase your confidence and also reduce your uh, your kind of a stress as well because you have already pre-received messages and then last one we have the rfid so rfid is a wireless identification technology which exchange data through radio waves and it's consist of the different type of a points such as a uh, transponder or tag which consists of a uh, antenna here so we have already uh, explained that part uh, in my previous lecture uh, just to give you idea that uh, transponder or tag or consist of antenna or any kind of a microchip which consists of different information about any object so through reader identification system so we need only two things one is take and then second one is the receiver and then in that part we have one way communication and two way communication in like one way communication it only detect your for example if we give example of a of the pakistan motorway where we have the one way system so it's only uh, kind of a read your your take system detect balance and it's open for you your door as well okay uh, that is very important that how rfid frequency can work in uh, different route guidance or like wayfinding for example if we take example of, of, of any trail or like mountain terrain or for example you call that uh, even to to like reach to everest like mountain k2 or such type of places that how we can reach there so we set our destination okay from our a and then we would like to reach to like that part okay so the pedestrian traffic control use almost all design measure to the increased mobility and accessibility first of all uh, that rfid work with gps along with gis which increase mobility as well as the accessibility <clears throat> so as a result attention is focused on the traffic control with the ITS upgrades okay and through intelligent transportation system we can significantly improve mobility and safety for the blind people okay so blind people could be uh, kind of facilitated within within uh, two two different way the first one is the audio message and then second one is to generate such type of a of a kind of a good uh, pedestrian track which they can feel when they are walking on that so for example if that specific blind person reach like that part so he will tell it that you need like 30 meter along that specific block and then turn right and then turn left and then here is your your like plaza or like where you want to go okay so this is how the rfid can work or play its role in the form of intelligent transportation system to increase mobility as well as accessibility not only for the pedestrian not only for the uh, for the cars but also for the for the blind or the handicapped people as well thank you very much i hope you like that session if you have any question you can comment uh, you can comment below.